Well, hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Travel Tuesday, beaming across the airwaves to you live from Nairobi. For those of you who've been following my stories today, you'll see that it's been quite a journey, very early start. Yes. Hope you, whoa, that's a person who's going to be saying hello in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, early start, uh, beautiful sunrise this morning across Mount Kenya. I hope you saw it. It was just lovely. It was so magical, so still. But I couldn't believe how quickly the sun rises. Honestly, that shot was, I don't know, about half past six maybe this morning. And by the time I left at eight, it was like high in the sky already. Hi, Calm Assist. Looking forward to chatting in a bit. Celia, long time no see. Yeah, the airport lounge. That was fun, wasn't it? Hi, Julia. Hi, Isabel. Hi, hi, hello from Dublin. Uh, glad you enjoyed Dollis Hill. Hi, Mary. Let's see if we've got our friends on Facebook. See if we can get them. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. How's everybody today? I hope you're feeling fine and dandy. I am here in the heart of Nairobi in an area called Karen. So called actually after Karen Blixen and it's a beautiful suburb you can probably see just a little bit of the flowers and things behind me i'm in guy and alice's garden those of you who were watching obviously on instagram a bit earlier will have tracked my journey it was a very early start from my home in the foothills of mount kenya up to nanuki which actually is right on the equator so you can literally stand with one foot either side of the equator which is quite fun um, and then a little plane down here to nairobi and there we are. So very nice to see everybody. Can we hear somebody? Would somebody like to say hello? <laughs> so this is Guy. This is my eldest son. <laughs> and um, my, my second grand dog. So you probably all know Botanical Baz. Hey, Loki. Loki, Loki. So why, why Loki? Why the name? Uh, because it's the Norse god of chaos. So, and thing. destruction, which he lives up to very well. <laughs> really? Has he chewed many things? Many things. Many, what does many he like things. best? Paper. Paper. Okay. Ooh. Well, I should watch my, my writing then because I've got some papers <laughs> spread out about. Lovely to see you, sweetheart. We shall see you a bit later. How old is he? <laughs> uh, must be 14 weeks now. 14 weeks. Yeah, you're not going to chew me, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Special guest. Thank you, sweetheart. So, you're going to, um, you're going to shut him away, away yes. from my paperwork. Well yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Isabel, you've got two grand dogs, have you? Lovely. Very nice to be with you. So as I hinted on my Instagram, in case you were watching me earlier, we're going to have a bit of a deep dive into nutrigenomics and a fascinating field, which is, I think, relatively new in the world of medicine. It's nutritional psychiatry. Yeah, there is such a thing. And we're going live to the States to talk to an American uh, medic, an amazing American medic from Harvard Medical School, Dr. Uma Nadu. And so, yeah, we're gonna be hopefully joined. You can't have the puppy. He's Guy and Alice's puppy. Yeah, I know, he's very sweet. He came to stay last weekend, it was just lovely. Um, so make sure I've got all my bits of bits of paper. Actually, these are my little luggage tags this morning. I did get the right luggage. It was a bit touch and go. Did you see, I nearly got on the wrong plane. Nearly ended up in the Maasai Mara. Honestly, it's great. I love that little airstrip, but you know, the little planes come in and you just kind of pick up your bags and walk on. And I was following the pilot and I thought, yeah, this looks like, you know, this is the Air Kenya flight. And uh, it was only when I stopped to ask that they said, no, no, this one's going to the Maasai Mara. So that would have been a long way back to do my lives, but I made it into town. Thank you, I like the jewelry. So this is actually Coasty jewelry. It's a lovely Kenyan uh, jewellery designer called Sally Dudmesh. You might have come across her. I think she might be online, um, but she sells a lot down in Lamu, which, you know, is a favourite spot of mine. And I'm going to be heading down there a bit later on, actually, in the week for half term. I've got my youngest, who's joined me. You might have seen I popped a little picture of him on Instagram, behind it, hiding behind a really big, beautiful bunch of Valentine's Day flowers. And talking about flowers, I hope you caught my podcast. Um, it was with Amy Collis, who looks after flowers for the Fair Trade Foundation, and that's an organization that I am an ambassador for. And having lived in Naivasha, which is the home of many, many flower farms, it's really interesting to see how they are working sustainably to really grow flowers with a very low carbon footprint, because of course they grow them here, think about the equator, under natural sunlight and natural heat. So, and they handpick them 
because it gives employment to lots of uh, the local labour force. And so when you actually add all those things together, they actually have a lower carbon footprint than many of the blooms that are grown in Europe and trucked across countries in refrigerated containers and grown under artificial heat and light. So it's a really interesting discussion looking at all of that and the environmental impact of the flower farms and many others, as well as the humanitarian impact of buying fair trade. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Thank you, Nikki. You were listening to that this morning on your way to Italian. Are you learning Italian? Do you know, I wish I spoke Italian. My family, my ex is half Italian, so we also got uh, lots of friends and family in Italy. I'm hoping to get back there later this year, but my Italian is rubbish. I would just love to be able to speak better Italian. I think Brella is quite good. Her full name's Gabriella, very Italian. And she looks quite Italian, I think, if you look at her. She's got that lovely sort of Roman nose and big dark eyes. And, and she has got dark hair, really, underneath all the purple. Anyway, I digress. This shirt, OK, let's get into the important details before we go into a deep dive on nutrigenomics. It's from one of my favourites, Carol McEwen. She just sells on Instagram if you want to follow her. And I love her things. You know, they're great out here because they're super light and they just kind of squash into nothing for traveling. And they sort of manage to look smart, slightly businessy, but also be really relaxed and comfortable. Anyway, that's the fashion and family update. Now, shall we get on with the business of the day? And I'm going to see whether we have Dr. Uma in the house. Hopefully we do. Hopefully. It's always a bit tricky, isn't it, when you cross continents and you rely on Wi-Fi. So, yeah, my girls are actually coming out talking about the rest of the family. Yeah, so I'll have pictures of Lily and Brella soon. Dr. Uma. Hi, Liz. It's lovely to meet you. It's very nice to meet you, too. Thank you for your time. Where are you talking to us from? So, uh, right this moment, I happen to be in New York because I'm presenting at a conference here tomorrow. Oh. Uh, but I generally am based in the Boston area. And... Uh, Still, still in the northeast where it's pretty cold. I think you're, you're in a warm climate, correct, right now? I, I, am, I am pretty warm <laughs> at the moment because you're based at Harvard Medical School, I is am. that right? Yes, I am, and, and Mass General Hospital. Okay, and you are a practicing psychiatrist, a proper I, medical doctor. Yes, so I'm both a medical doctor and uh, a psychiatrist, but I really pivoted into bringing together my passions in nutrition, the culinary arts, and mental health to uh, really lead and bring forward nutritional psychiatry because I think that it's a, a real niche and a real gap that we're missing in terms mm -hmm. of our mental health. Yeah, fascinating. Can you be any louder? I've turned my volume up okay. as, as loud as I can go, just in case, because sure. I know sure. our lovely friends on um, Facebook and Instagram, they can't sure. see you, alas, oh, I see. but they can, they can hear they you. Hear so, because oh. it's all about oh. content. Doesn't really matter what you look like, but it's, it's all about content. Um, so what's the conference that you're presenting at? I'm actually presenting at a local conference, uh, Metagenics, that is really about the science-backed information behind things like supplements, but also other information that is health delivery for the public, uh, but also for professionals. And, you know, I think that what's important is that uh, we understand this connection between how we eat and how we feel. Because I, you know, we hit January, Liz, and it's either dry January or weight loss uh, commercials that are on television. And of course, mm -hmm. in the US, we're famous for, you know, caring so much about weight loss more than a lot of other things. And not that it's not important, but I think that that tends to take the focus away from how we actually could be eating just healthier every day. And no person mm -hmm. is perfect. I'm not a perfect eater, but trying mm -hmm. to make that effort most days than not. So I think yeah. that that gap is something that I've tried to fill with this work and hopefully understand that nutritional psychiatry is the use of healthy whole foods and nutrients based on the scientific evidence to improve your mental well-being. And yeah. it's really not about eating 10 blueberries or 10 milligrams of Prozac, which is otherwise called fluoxetine. It's really about how do you find the balance in your emotional well-being? And food is a very mm. big part of that. Mm. And your background is very interesting because you are a chef and you work a lot with food. When did you sort of start making the connection as a medic, as a clinician, psychiatrist, linking the two, linking food and psychiatry? 
You know, much of it stems from my childhood. My book, uh, this, uh, uh, The Food Mood Connection in the UK, is actually dedicated to my grandmother because my mom was in medical mm-hmm. school during the day and I spent time with my grandma during the day. But I'd also watch her prepare um, healthy, healthy meals, pick vegetables from the garden, sit down and eat lunch with my grandparents. But they also taught me yoga and meditation. So I was brought up in this very holistic environment where prayer, Mm -hmm. meditation, yoga, eating healthy, but also scientific information because a lot of my uncles and aunts were practicing physicians or training and a couple of uh, relatives are also Ayurvedic practitioners. So I'd like to, as I Mm -hmm. thought about it, Liz, I realized that when I started studying psychiatry, um, I I was wondering, I wondered all the time, you know, we ask about a medication and we, pres- we take, pull, the first thing we pull out is that prescription pad. You know, why aren't we asking about what, what are people doing for exercise? What are they eating? What are they drinking? Yeah. What are they doing? Do they have social connections? Are they isolated? Much of mm-hmm. the stuff that actually the pandemic really uncovered in a way. Um, yeah. And that was a, a moment early on with the patient really made me realize that putting this connection together of food and interpreting nutrition for someone who's struggling with some mental health symptoms or not, it becomes important for their, their overall health. And, it, and yeah. it really happened when a patient kind of yelled at me for causing him to gain weight, which I knew wasn't true. Uh, it was a very junior, very junior <laughs> trainee, had started prescribing and thought, you know, I was very smart at the time, I'm sure, but it really wasn't. And he came in saying, you know, you caused me to gain weight. And looking at the data in front of me on the computer, I knew that wasn't true. But he also had a very large cup of coffee in his hand. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's so dry here. Um, so Sorry. <laughs> I, looked, I looked at the cup of coffee and I said, trying, I will admit, to distract him. You know, Bill, what did you put in your coffee? And it turned out, Liz, that he put more than a quarter cup of processed creamer and eight teaspoons of sugar. Oh, and creamer and sugar in the coffee. It, and he was blaming you for his weight gain. <clears throat> right. And so I was able to interpret that for him. And when I realized, you know, I'm not much of a calorie counter. I much believe in the quality of food and the sauce. But sure. in that moment, a simple calculation showed him the number of empty calories he was consuming. Yeah. And so here he is yelling at me, but he actually can not only calm down, we grew to have a really great therapeutic relationship. He lost weight, he felt mm-hmm. better, but it was a simple lesson to me. And it was really my aha moment because when I saw his eyes light up because he felt he could make a change and it was simple um, mm-hmm. and actionable. I realized that, you know, as doctors, we just simply don't learn enough nutrition in medical schools. And yeah. both in the U.S. and the U.K., there are definitely movements and attempts to change that, but it's not perfect yet. So we have to fill in that gap. So putting that together and separate my love for cooking, I later went to culinary school. Uh, Julia Child is my food hero. Oh, <laughs> Julia Child. I love that movie when Meryl Streep played her. Isn't that amazing? It was wonderful. One of it my favorites. Wonderful. Yeah. It really was a great movie and she did such a wonderful job. But, you know, Julia was, was, you know, well into, she's a great example of how not only nutrigenomics, but also our nutritional profile, our genetics, our, our background, everything are different for each person. She lived well into her 90s. <clears throat> did she? she? She did. She cooked and she lived actually, she lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, close to the school I went to. And um, she cooked, you know, if you watch, watch the movie, she always cooked with butter. Um, yes. She ate luscious meals. She drank <laughs> martinis. Um, but, you know, she had a great attitude. She was happy. She, she never gained yeah. weight. So I'm guessing she, you know, no one spoke about whether she exercised, but she must have been a super active person. And yes. so I think for each person, it's different. And I think certainly in the U.S., Liz, I think people get tend to get... Um, into rules around how to eat, what not to eat. And I think that's where we really get lost in the mix. Yeah. I think what, one of the things that I've learned over the years is just how important it is to cook from scratch. And, yeah. you know, Julia Charles may have been cooking with lots of butter and all sorts of you know, things, she cooked but they were fresh food. and yes. they were cooked from scratch and it wasn't out of packets. And this, uh, the danger of the ultra processed foods and all the additives that go in, there just seems to be a greater awareness now of how they impact obesity, impact 
our immune system? You know, is, is there an impact on mood? Do you, do you see that as a psychiatrist, that people eating too many processed foods have a, a negative does. impact on mental health? It's a real correlation that people are missing um, because you're absolutely right. They're worried about either their waistline or maybe their type 2 diabetes or their physical health. But the processed, mm. ultra-processed junk foods, um, fast foods, it turns out that uh, research and development of fast foods has shown us that companies add sugar to French fries. And they do that mm. to make them hyper palatable. Um, a study in nutrients from last year talked about how hyper palatable foods are engineered that way so that you crave them and you want to have more of them yeah you so, just keep eating 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 don't you and you don't stop and then the next mm -hmm. day you want you want another bag of those fries or whatever it is yeah. and so they're engineered to kind of trick our brain a little bit and set off those cravings so you know when we talk about those ultra processed foods with tons of preservatives, added sodium, but also the added sugars, they set up cycles in our body which are just not healthy and they impact mm -hmm. our brain. By impacting our brain and causing things like inflammation in the gut and the brain, those things definitely change our mental well-being. And I've seen it happen clinically and the research has shown that too. So mm -hmm. those foods really do matter for our mental health. Um, things mm -hmm. like artificial sweeteners, processed vegetable oils, um, all of these, you know, trans fats, um, things that make foods shelf stable, you know, those are, right. those are also messing with our gut and therefore with our brain. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? And I think I know my community here have become, you know, widely aware, I think, of this link, you know, the vagus nerve, the gut brain connection. That's In right. America, what is the state of mental health? I mean, we're two years pretty much into this pandemic, and I know it's taken the most terrible toll in terms of anxiety and mental health and depression and rates of suicide and just all, all sorts. What, what's it like over there where you are? What are you seeing? You know, it's been, um, it's been devastating. It, it really, I feel like mental health has been the parallel pandemic um, you know, New yeah, York Times that's featured a description of the parallel yeah. pandemic, yeah. And and it really, in some ways, Liz, has been the silent pandemic that's been going on for a long time. What mm -hmm. COVID did is it sort of uncovered it for several reasons. One is our poor state of physical health in the U.S. So many Americans have some element of poor metabolic health, and that places yeah. us at greater risk of uh, having those pre-morbid conditions or coexisting conditions, and then worse uh, symptoms when we when we have COVID or succumb mm. to COVID or survive mm. it and then have things like long haul syndrome and other side effects. People don't realize that one of the biggest underpinnings of all that is how we're eating. It's not just a pill you're taking, it's how we're actually eating and living our lives. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that because of isolation and quarantine, all of which were necessary for safety, people were much more isolated. Um, mm. There was a huge uptick in teen suicide yeah, which is very concerning. Um, and the CDC released data in the middle in summer of 2020, and 11% of Americans considered suicide, which is- 11% of Americans considered suicide. Considered suicide. So that's a massive, massively frightening data I am beyond data shocked point. by that. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, even, uh, to, even to vaguely to think, countenance that, that's right, to you've got to be it. on the got extreme be. edge sure. of You've got to be- health you've got to be really struggling and suffering. So this wow. was data that also showed in addition to that 11%, um, there were also, there was an increase in depression, anxiety, insomnia, which we actually are sort of coining the term Corona somnia because so many people are just struggling with that angst around this ongoing <laughs> situation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, things like alcohol and substance abuse are on the rise as well. Mm. So, many, many elements of mental health are just not doing well. And at the same mm -hmm. time, the New York Times had an article about a month back showing how there aren't enough therapists to go around. You know, yeah. the, even with telehealth, there's so much, uh, so much of a need that yeah, uh, people are just not feeling well. So, you know, oh, where, yeah. you know, where I'm at with it is anything we can do, whether you've seen a doctor, a psychiatrist, a therapist, mm -hmm what can we do while we're waiting on that appointment? You know, we can actually change what's on our plate. We can change how we're thinking about it. Yeah. We can add in those nutrients that are powerful um, and that can help us. 
I think that is really empowering. And, you know, I remember writing this actually in a book years and years ago, that we often, we may be a victim of circumstance. We can't choose our genetics. We can't choose our parents. We can't choose necessarily where we live or mm -hmm. our job or the quality of the air that we can breathe. But we can choose what goes into the shopping trolley. We can. You know, and, can. and it's eating fresh is often less expensive and better and you know we can make those choices and just weaning ourselves off the processed foods i'm really interested to, to hear you talk about the properties of certain supplements and we did a great podcast with tim samuels yes your co-founder at uh, calm assist and i've also recorded a podcast with him recently which will go out on my channels in in a, in a couple of weeks and he told me something which was fascinating which i wanted to pick up with you and that was that the ingredients in saffron, so really, you know, common herb that's used now in a, in a lot of really great supplements, including yours, can be as powerful as Prozac yes. in terms of its ability <laughs> for, for mental health. Talk us through that. H how on earth would that work? I mean, that just sounds extraordinary. And for you as a, as a Harvard Medical School psychiatrist to be saying, actually, you know, saffron is something that we should be looking at, in, you know, maybe instead of or alongside Prozac, how does it work? So the way that it works is that saffron has been studied um, in individuals with depression as compared to antidepressants. And turns out that, and remember the one caveat about this, and that's, that's why it's the, one of the times when, although I'm a food first person, because I think it's an easy way for people to start, I also feel there's a place for supplements. And it's one of the times that a supplement is really critical. And here's why, Liz, you know, the amount that we use in a delicious biryani or risotto, any dish that you're cooking, with with um, saffron or even um, a seafood stew, for example, mm -hmm. uh, is not enough to have that impact. So in the studies, they were able to formulate um, the saffron into a supplement that was a much higher dose. And it's one right. of the few things now, is it great to cook with saffron? Absolutely. You will always get brain benefits from the fresh herbs and spices that you use. But it's a case of if you want that dose that's going to have an impact in yeah. studies that compared it to Prozac, then a supplement is the way to go. And it was really an unusual finding because it's not something when you look at saffron that you think immediately, well, gee, how, how is this going to yeah, um, affect, affect my mood? So, um, you know, it, it affects uh, inflammation, it impacts the immune system. And some of the underlying mechanisms now for mental health that have emerged include things like oxidative stress, which is why eating foods that are rich in antioxidant properties are helpful. Um, you know, there's emotional immunity, there is uh, inflammation. Inflammation is a huge driver in studies in the last, I would say, five years and on longer have really yeah. pinpointed that inflammation underlying these conditions can worsen. And what worsens inflammation? Well, one thing is stress. It's, it's also several mm. other factors, but food. What's the one thing we can change immediately is how we eat yeah, and food infects eat. the inflammation. So saffron is actually pretty powerful in that way. Um, and so you know, I, I've, I've got powerful. here, I've actually got, these are the, the lovely Calm Assist supplements, by the way, which we do have a 20% Liz Loves discount. So thank you very much for that. Um, but this one I was looking at, because this is one that Tim was saying that he was taking. And it has a lot of saffron in it mm -hmm. for mood. And yeah. I think he was explaining that, you know, kind of one of the, the capsules is like an entire jar of, of you know, spice jar of of saffron, which is extraordinary. So, you know, more than you could get by making a lovely, you know, turmeric chai Much latte, more. which which is yes. great, but, you know, you're going to get the therapeutic value for something like this. You want the therapeutic value, and that's why in this instance, the supplement is key. Um, you yeah. want to get that powerful impact, and you just simply cannot get it in a food dose um, yeah. that you consume. Now, tell me, can you take these alongside SSRIs? You know, if you're on some kind of medication, would it perhaps mean that you could reduce the dose or do they interact should you not take the two together you know what's what's the deal sure. so i think that's a great question Liz, because you know nutritional psychiatry is not prescriptive in the sense that we want you to eat healthier we want to switch out those um, unhealthy processed and ultra-processed foods but it's always wise to speak to your doctor 
And, you know, mm. before people, before I get the eye rolls from, from our guests, let me tell you why. There are things like grapefruit juice. Simple, healthy, freshly squeezed grapefruit, a piece of fruit, great for you. But grapefruit interacts with certain important liver enzymes, which impacts the metabolism of psychiatric medications. So it's nice. really important with, with whatever you're, you're eating. Um, um, I, for another example is I had a patient I was evaluating recently who shared that through, even though fermented foods are considered super healthy, a study in cell from research, researchers at Stanford last year showed how including fermented foods reduced inflammation in the gut. It's hugely important. And this client was saying she had started to incorporate them in her food, but she noticed a change in her level of anxiety. Yeah. And she was well, food journaling very carefully. So, so even though that's, yeah. that's just a one-off example, every yeah, person food, responds food differently. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my daughter um, has an autoimmune issue and she needs to be very low in histamine. Yes. So she can't have any of the fermented foods. I used to feed her lots right. of kombucha and kefir and things and she can't have that because it's high in okay. histamine. So absolutely. And of course, you know, there are websites. I mean, I think, you know, you say the eye roll. I think if you if you go to your GP, perhaps if you're lucky enough to get an appointment, appointment um, I know, an it's online hard. consultation, you know, and, yeah. and you're saying um, I've got some prescription medication. Can I take saffron supplements? The likelihood of them knowing. I guess they have resources that they can they can use. Are, are those sort of websites that are trusted that people can look up for contraindications to make life a bit easier? Right. So certainly there are websites to look up, but here's why it's important to go through a clinician of some kind, whether it's your doctor, your GP, your nurse practitioner, um, they have access to interpret the information for you. And I would yeah. hesitate to just say to people, go to, you know, the PDR, uh, which is, which is the resource we physicians use here in the, U in the US, mm -hmm. because, you know, as a physician, they might, or the clinician might actually know those, those specific interactions. They also know the prescriptions you're taking, other supplements that you've listed. And I fully respect that it's yeah. hard to get to see doctors these days. It, it's hard all over the world um, to get appointments, but it's just a safety check. Um, mm. I don't see mm. in the profile of the saffron supplement anything that would directly endanger you, but I, I don't know a person's personal condition um, yeah. and, and how they might respond. Do, do you think that some people, you know, listening, I know I've got a lot of comments going on Instagram at the moment, people really feeling very low in mood and anxious yeah. and not sleeping so well. You know, could these perhaps be the first line before going down yes. the prescription route? Could you safely try yes. these to see if your mood is lifted and, and your sleep is better and your anxiety is reduced? I think that food and supplements like this, things that are over the counter that you can purchase are a good first step while getting yeah. in to see your physician to be fully evaluated. Mm -hmm. Because one yeah. of the things that mood supplements can, you know, that mood supplements can do is say someone is, has not, has an undiagnosed bipolar disorder. You know, it could right. push their mood in the wrong direction. Um, it yeah. could uplift their mood a little too much. So that's, that's the too reason much. to be yeah. cautious. Right. There's a reason to just yeah. throw a little bit of caution in, but as, as, as yeah. something, as a starting point, it's safe. Yeah. Um, it's a good option as is mm. food. So that combined with a good diet, you know, you, you have, you can't, you, you know, you've heard the expression, you can't exercise out of a bad diet. So it's, it's a yeah. similar thing. You want to put all of these pieces together. Yeah, you can't just have a, a have a, have a trash diet and then think, well, I'm going to you know <laughs> pop a few supplements and it'll all be fine because it doesn't work like that. Well, I'm going to exercise. Um, I know I, a couple of people are asking specifically about this. So this is Karma Assist. If you didn't, I know that Rachel's on Facebook and and can do the link, but Karma Assist um, is the the name of the company that we're talking about, and this is the mood formulation, and this doesn't only have saffron. I'm just looking at it. Um, it's also got lovely calming herbs like passion flower that you would have heard us talk about before, lavender, turmeric, acerola cherries. I mean, it's 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 quite a complex. Is that something that you've personally worked on, putting all these different active botanicals together? So the way that we did this was is we really reviewed the research of what would uh, what would match together. Um, yeah. the team, you know, looked at the science behind it, looked at the lowest risk profiles of what we could include in these. In other words, yeah. those studies which had little to no side effects of these, because the, the microbiome is unique. I always like to say the microbiome is like a thumbprint. It's different in each person. 
um, mm. because the response might be, would, would be different. So we really looked at low risk profiles of nutrients that also had a high and powerful impact, especially on, mm. on the brain and I emotions. Like low risk, um, high and, impact. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and putting it together in really simple, clean formula um, that mm. people can, you know, I love it if you look at, look at something and you can read the ingredients. Um, same thing with, with foods that come in packets, right? If the label is this thick and you don't recognize a word, only that's a problem. Name, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Th- those things were important to, for it to be a really clean formula. Now, the other one that I really like personally uh, and that I have been enjoying out here is relax. So you've got four right. of them. You've got energy, immunity, mm-hmm. mood, which we've talked about, and relax. And I've been actually just writing a, an article for my magazine on ashwagandha. Mm-hmm. And I guess for you, with your Indian heritage and Ayurvedic traditions, you will know, you know, ashwagandha upside down and inside out. But it's a relatively new discovery, certainly for me and for a lot of people in the UK back home. Ashwagandha just seems to have, I mean, it seems to fix virtually everything. I mean, is there anything that ashwagandha can't do? It seems to give us energy. It's an adaptogenic, so it can lift us up. It can calm us down. It helps with sleep. It helps with mood. It helps with muscle strength. I mean, it's extraordinary, isn't it, ashwagandha? Ashwagandha is actually uh, something that is pretty powerful, and it's wonderful because it does target so many different things. Yeah. As a powder, um, it's pretty bitter. So, is it? you know, one of it, it is. So it's not something that is easy. Another reason to add it to a supplement. It, it's not easy yeah. to consume. Um, so with it. saffron, yeah. it's the amount. With ashwagandha, it's the taste. And yet it's very powerful. So mm-hmm. adding it to a supplement made a lot of sense because yeah. it is it is powerful in terms of, you know, the hundreds of centuries that it's been around and it's been used mm-hmm. um, to help especially be very calming. And I think that one of the things I keep hearing about is how people are feeling so stressed and persistently feeling stressed Mm -hmm. during the pandemic. So this is an easy way to uh, calm yourself Mm -hmm. down. Um, You know, having a calming cup of tea can do that. Learning a breathing Mm -hmm. exercise can do that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, if you really feel you need that extra step, it would be, um, you know, uh, a lot of the research of double blind placebo controlled trials showed a reduction of anxiety and stress using ashwagandha. So it made sense to add this to a supplement as well. And not only ashwagandha, but you're using something else in this, which is a new one for me, and that's California poppy. <laughs> what, what, what does California poppy do? Does it come from the poppy seed? Is it like opium? Um, I don't believe it's like OD, opium. And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I honestly, at this point, I'm, I'm having a little bit of difficulty figuring, remembering the data on that, but I'll get back <laughs> to you on that and your audience. And I don't, I don't want to misspeak, so. Yeah, fine. <laughs> but what, 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 what does California poppy do? I mean, is it, is it a relaxing ingredient? Yeah, so it was included because it's really meant to help that calming effect um, and meant to, you know, what happens when the body is stressed is that you have um, an over, you have cortisol step in, right? And, you, and it amps, kind uh-huh. of amps up your system. Carry on talking, so, it's going to fix something. Mm-hmm. Of course. I'm and listening. so it's, it's just really important with um, things like this type of stress that we want to be calming down, Liz, is really the stress that's going to cause more damage to your genes, to your condition, to your physical health, but also your mental health. Because there's also an important type of stress called eustress. Um, and eustress, spelled E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S, is the type of stress that you know. stress E. EU stress. That's what is say, EU say, stress? Say, I mean, we're, presumably we're, we're not talking about Brexit, which is very topical over here <laughs> in the EU. That's a different type of EU, is it? That's an EU. That's, that's a good qualification. <laughs> Thank you for that. No, this is, this is the type of stress I like to say, you know, when I'm studying for my board exam or preparing for lecture, um, you know, something that is anxiety provoking, you need to, to be active, focused, engage in that activity in order to get through, say, that exam that you're taking. But it's when that type of anxiety and stress sort of flips over and becomes, affects Mm. our level of functioning. So people who get up with that knot in their stomach and are so anxious they can't get out of bed or can't get through the day, can't leave home, can't get onto a Zoom meeting. That's that's Mm. really where it's become, it's affecting your functioning. It impacts your, your life. And your life. 
Um, and similarly with inflammation, I think another important thing for people to understand is that when you fall over and scuff your knee or have a scrape, um, you sustain a small injury. The body needs to have the process of healthy inflammation to, to really resolve that injury and help with healing. But when we talk about inflammation in the context of, of nutritional psychiatry and these conditions, that is a chronic and insidious stress that can be um, uh, infl- mm. stress that brings on inflammation. And that inflammation sets in in the gut and disrupts the gut microbiome and then loops right. back to impact the brain. So it's also important to understand that some types of inflammation are good. They're helping with our healing. But other types yeah. of inflammation... Um, are very damaging to our body. And that's the chronic insidious inflammation that we're concerned about. I think a lot of people, myself included, you know, might not have made that connection, but our stress and our anxiety in our heads and our mental health that's just been so under, under it these last couple of years can have a physical impact on inflammation in the gut. You know, we often think it kind of works the other way, that the gut is kind of influencing the brain. But the fact that the stress that's coming in and our mental thoughts and ideas are actually creating inflammation in the gut, which is then leads to inflammation, which then leads to a physical condition, you know, which is our, our mental health can actually affect our physicality. It's this bi-directional relationship between the brain and gut and the gut and brain. Um, yeah. The brain and gut arise from the exact same cells in the human embryo. People don't realize that, and then they actually ah, grow apart. Let's to just form say that two again. Separate... Sorry, we've got some yeah. helicopters going over. So the brain and the gut <laughs> arise, arise from, from the, the same cells, cells in the embryo. In the human, in the Isn't embryo, that and then they divide up. Embryo. So they then divide off and create these two to areas form these of two the body. Organs. Um, so they form the two areas of the body, but they remain connected throughout life by the 10th cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, which you referred to earlier on. And I like to call the vagus nerve a two-way superhighway because it allows for chemical messages between these organs all the time. Um, And then, you know, now that we understand that's connected, we also know about serotonin being called the happiness hormone. It's what medications Mm -hmm. like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are impacting. These are SSRIs, but 90 to 95% of serotonin and the receptors are in the gut. So if someone yes. listening has ever had a relative or themselves have taken say Prozac or Zoloft or one of those SSRI, med- SSRI medications, you always, almost always develop gastrointestinal side effects when you take them, some, some discomfort in your gut. Um, and and really? that's the reason, it's the location it's a common side effect of these medications. So it's just Which helpful means. for us to make these links um, and understand. Yeah, make them connections. So the relaxed formula with the ashwagandha, the California poppy, that's really helping to produce serotonin, is it? That's really helping it, it's, the relaxation It's helping process. with the balance. It's helping the balance, with the relaxation the and, and helping with the balance. And, and this is what we, you know, this, it's, it's you know, this we're trying to do this in a natural way so where yeah. medication would be doing that are there natural formulas to help people along food mm. can do that and so can certain supplements um mm. and i think it's about finding our way forward with what works for a person and i personally think that it's a combination mm. of all of these things together mm. that really agree, help, like a holistic a holistic yeah, yeah. Approach it has to be the whole people. 360 the whole thing the know, relaxation as you say you know the prayer the meditation the mindfulness the calm, the sleep, you know, but it all impacts, doesn't it? And if we can start to get little bits of it better, you start to see everything changing and shifting. And And this is just such a simple evidence-based way to help, I think. And I think that the other um, thing (laughs) about Americans is we tend to be very impatient. We're always looking for a quick fix, a quick pull, (laughs) a convenience store, a fast food. Um, So so I think that understanding um, that this is a a slow process, that that you, it's slow and steady, because what we're trying to do is not not create this that five pounds of weight loss before an award show or, you know, 10 pounds before a wedding. It's, it's sustainable. You know, it's, it's meant to help you um, learn healthy habit changes that you start to make these natural choices while understanding that mm. this 80-20 rule 
which I call a pillar of nutritional psychiatry, which is 80% of the time you're doing a good job and 20% of the time life happens, you know. Absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, eat, eat your favorites, you know, 20% of the time and 80%, you know, really I try and focus on food as fuel. But, you know, I was with my, my kids, my, my ex and my youngest came out for half term and um, we've got a great little garden here and we grow lots of chard. And I'm a big fan of greens and I just pick some and cook some really simply and put some olive oil on it to kind of get the bioavailability to you know, increase the vitamin Delicious. K. And, yeah. and, you know, and he, he's an 11 year old boy not known for loving his greens like his older brother. <laughs> and he, you know, he had thirds, you know, it was just, That's wonderful. It just, let, That's just, you know, give it. You know, he saying, these are so delicious and I really like them. Can we have these at home? And I say, yeah, we do have them at home. It's just, you know, maybe it tastes better in the sunshine. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, it's getting those healthy habits, isn't it? And, and it's looking at the whole them, thing. Yeah. But I think if you can start to clear the way, and that's what I found, certainly from my own journey, with right. a few herbs and, and ashwagandha for me has been a, a big discovery. Okay. Something else that I'd love to talk to you about, because I know we haven't got too much time, is the immunity formulation because that's using something um, which I've come across in the world of nootropics, and that's reishi, reishi yes. mushrooms. Yes. As a nutritional psychiatrist, are you researching more of these amazing mushrooms and, and fungi for their, their brain impact? They really have come forward um, as being powerful. They're contained in teas mm -hmm. and other formulas and in supplements. So where not everyone, you know, firstly, you want people to have enough of it. Like we talked about the saffron, um, you know, it has uh, genetic and environmental influences. It's important for the microbiome. Um, it's found to be powerful. So the research behind it was, was strong enough to want to include it. And I think that sometimes, Liz, when people see these unusual usual names, even the ashwagandha, they hear that it's a good, um, it may be good, but they don't know what to do with it. And that's why I mentioned it can sometimes be found in a powder form, but please don't, you know, that's not the way to go have it because you'll hate it. And you'll wonder why yeah. my doctor's asking me to do this, you know, and, and it's just makes, it makes it easier to formulate it for an individual. And it was important to have a clean supplement, meaning we're not adding a ton of nonsense into it and you can see what yeah. the ingredients are so reishi yeah. was very important in that way and i also feel like it's coming forward in, in other formulas uh, but i think that if you want the um, you want a powerful amount for what your to help with your immunity because remember what covid did is it taught us that you know boosting immunity because of the cytokine storm response in the early covid cases and being concerned for that we don't necessarily want you to be um, for example um, people don't realize red bell peppers and kiwi fruit have some of the highest levels of vitamin C. But I'm not saying eat a ton of that. I'm just saying include that in your natural daily diet or several times a week kiwi to make fruit, sure you peppers. are taking care yeah. <laughs> red bell peppers. You know, so people, yeah. and of course citrus, but people tend to think of citrus, citrus. only. So we want to think about immunity as not amping up or boosting it, but we want to think about it as really helping our immunity. And, and on a daily basis, like we're making those healthy habit food changes to include these as ways to just help our immunity along. So you're aiding your immunity yeah. um, to, to be fortified in a way that if you were to have your body were to meet an infection, that your body would have the strength to fend it off. I've, I've read research that reishi mushroom in particular can help increase our immune cells, in particular the, the lymphocytes, which seem to yes. be involved, as you say, with this cytokine storm and, yes. and being able to fight off all kinds of bugs and coughs and colds and flu and, and generally, you know, support our immune system in, in a more beneficial way. Is, is there much clinical evidence, because that's what we always like to focus on here, that actually supports right. reishi mushroom? They, you know, they detect and destroy foreign invaders, um, you know, bacteria that enter our system. So they they've, and viruses. So they've actually been shown to be powerful in that way. Um, wow. So, you know, they understanding that from the research makes them powerful. And it was, it, I feel like it was it was an easy inclusion, you know, to to look sure. at that and to and to make. And, to yeah. make that and I know that, that one of your colleagues um, are, in, in Karmacist is a professor of epigenetics yes. at Stanford and looking at the way these particular herbs that you've chosen, these particular botanical mm -hmm. and natural ingredients 
work on a genetic level work on our genetic expression yes to so, really kind of hack into the way the body's working yes they so they impact the immune system and you know these include basically the, this the supply of nutrients from the reishi uh, they impact cortisol levels impact the gut microbiome and all of these all of these are related. Now, when we use the word microbiome, we are referring to the genetic material in the gut. When we say microbiota, we are just referring to the five types of different uh, bacteria um, and other five, about five different types of sort of organisms that live there. So looking mm. at the microbiome, the genetic and epigenetics of it, it became important because there's basically, um, you know, the reishi mushrooms are important for variation of genes contained there, um, the pro-inflammatory uh, pro um, and anti-inflammatory, most importantly, cytokines, which are the signaling molecules in the immune system that promote or impair inflammation in the body. So it's it sort of, if we want to think about it this way, it's working with our system to help us. And one of the ways yeah. that it works is through the gut microbiome. So would you say then that the immunity formulation can definitely help support the immune system so we're less susceptible to these kinds of viruses and bacteria? That would be, that, that's the aim of this supplement, yes, to, yeah. to make sure that you are, your immune system is fortified. It's yeah. being fed with nutrients uh, that are not mm. only going to affect your genes in a positive way, but also affect your microbiome in a good way, yeah. and that you are really taking care. Because the thing about it is, is we don't eat perfect diets. No one is a, is a perfect eater. So much, many of us walk around with some level of inflammation in the gut. So having these, the, mm. you know, a supplement that actually just not only is taking care of that and helping you is part of the picture of putting it all together. Yeah. And then lastly, let's just talk, touch on the energy supplement for those in, in need of a bit Which of a pick me up here if you're feeling perhaps post viral you're convalescing or you just you know think oh I really need yeah. some a boost in this gray sad times and um in in the kind of the uh, the northern hemisphere anyway where there's little sunlight at the moment um, yeah. The energy formula has something in it which I wanted to talk to you about which was uh, it's got cayenne pepper and go to cola which is a bit of a pick me up um, and is this the one with maca as well? It's, it has maca in it as well. Yeah. It has it maca. Has maca. Okay. Well. Now, now I've had discussions with naturopaths and herbalists about maca, saying that it's particularly good for midlife women because it's particularly good for libido. And just asking for a friend, clearly, you know, mm -hmm. is this something yes. that is this going to give all all midlife women just a bit of a a bit of a zing, you know, a bit of a kind of give, refreshing give, recharge, as it were? You know, there's actually a good amount of evidence behind behind maca and libido. Really, so behind maca, in, you know, <laughs> and, and so there are maca powders. There are lots of different formulas out there, and in fact, you know. Um, there are some physician menopause experts that will recommend that as part of either supplement or formula. So I think this is a great way to go using this mm -hmm. clean supplement and trying it out at the recommended dose. Um, you know, yeah. doing the things that, that we spoke about, Liz, checking with your doctor, just making sure that, sure that it's otherwise okay. But yes, the answer would be yes. It actually has a good amount of evidence behind that libido uplifting quality. And we know menopause is so complicated, both from yeah. the different physical symptoms one experiences, the hormone changes which are underlying mm. that. But how people feel, they feel fatigued or they feel irritable. Um, they feel, you know, so many different things. They have, you mm. know, night sweats and, and all of this discomfort. But also, you know, there's a lot of dryness, there's discomfort, um, yeah. uh, you know, and, and that impacts libido. So yeah. finding yeah. a way to, uh, to improve that, I think it becomes a, a huge lifestyle factor. Now, we're you obviously getting make... a lot of questions yeah. that are coming here, not only on Facebook, but also on Instagram. And I know from talking to Tim before that you do have a very good team at Karma Assist and that you can be contacted, you know, if people want to have specific questions. I mean, obviously the first thing to do is go to, go to the website, Karmasis. Is it karmasis.com, your website? Yes. Um, yeah, and, and just, you know, have a good look around, read all the information, read the data sheets, read the blogs, you know, read the, the, the scientific studies, which is what I love about this range is that it is evidence-based and, you know, I can dial into, you know, Harvard Medical School and the Stanford professors, et cetera, know that it's, you know, it's not a bit of hocus pocus, that it is actually real, real stuff. 
in real quantities. Um, and, you know, the ashwagandha, for example, I've been taking ashwagandha. And then when I was talking to Tim about it, I, I got him to double check because I said, you know, I was, I'm, I, you know, I forensically look at all my labels all the time. And there's actually 10 times more ashwagandha in your supplement than the one that I was taking. Yeah. And he was explaining that it's also the best kind. I think it's called something to do with 66. I can't quite remember. The quality. Exactly. Yeah. The quality. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when you've got this kind of medical background, you know that actually you're getting, you know, good value and you're getting herbs and botanicals to a level that will actually have an impact and really do something. Yes. And, and that was important to us to make sure that the research, it was research backed. Um, there was real evidence because one of the things that I hear all the time in, in the nutrition world is, you know, someone mentions a supplement or uh, say an omega-3 or mentions something. And I always say to people, you know, on a day that I quote the study, someone else can quote a study that, that says, says quite the opposite. But here's, here's the world of nutritional science. Yeah. And I think that it's about finding a clean formula with really good ingredients that have really evidence behind them. Yeah. You can read about Don't it. Waste your time you can on, see the effects. Yeah. We have the research studies linked. Um, so you can literally print that or show it to your doctor or have someone in your family, maybe yeah. who's in medical school or something, just, just look at it with you. Uh, and that's the reason yeah. we did it. And we want to be as transparent about the ingredients. And really, yeah. for me, the feeling was there are certain things that need to be supplemented. And these are not things that you can consume easily. Not things um, in the so, diet. You know, as you say, you can't have not enough things saffron. In that Right. from food you, you know by all means enjoy your turmeric latte you know as well as right. but it's not going to have that therapeutic level the same it's not going to reach yeah it's not going to reach that level yeah um, yeah and actually and and you're I not going to want to eat <laughs> and you can be contacted i mean karma assist can be contacted on instagram you've got contact this on your at, website yes and this instagram questions. site um i have a different instagram handle at dr uma naidu but i'm joining karma assist you can re reach us here through direct messages and through the website brilliant. as well brilliant brilliant dr uma I, I i'm gonna have to let you go i know that you've got to go and get ready to to, to speak at a conference over in, at harvard it's so fascinating and i know that this is a subject that we're going to come back to time and time again because it's evidence-based and it works. And, you know, I know from my own life that it works, which is why I do tend to kind of bang on about it and, and want to share it and bring everybody the best. And I know that Tim feels exactly the same, having been a broadcast journalist and, you know, worked yeah. in extreme yeah. war zones in Afghanistan and all those places yeah. to then suddenly yeah. become a, a kind of a wellness brand founder because he had his own mental health issues, which he's talked very openly about, struggling with you know, male depression, which has been something that yeah. doesn't often get talked about. Um, that is true. There's so much stigma so associated with it. That's true. Yeah. Um, I, no, I love talking to you, Liz. I love how, how, how much you care about diving into the science. And I also think that, you know, so much of the time, I want to leave people with the thought that, you know, some, think about the last time that you might have had a headache. And what did you do? You know, you went to the, um, you probably took a paracetamol, you took some glass of water, here we take Tylenol, and swallowed it. And did you ever, did you think about it at all? I mean, think about it. You swallowed it, you drank some water, where did it go and what happened? It went to your gut, but it acted on your head, right? It relieved yes. your headache. So think about food in that way, because we don't often make that connection that, you know, yeah. the foods that you're eating make a difference. And just like that, all these nutrients and these ingredients impact um, us elsewhere in the body, although we are consuming it as a supplement or as a food. Yeah. And it's very empowering. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. And I know that you're going to get lots more followers and lots of people going to check out Karma Assist because it's, um, it's a really, really interesting new brand. So congratulations and thank you. For thank you, Liz. Thanks so much for inviting me. It was lovely to talk with you. I look forward to seeing you. Bye. Thank you. I hope so too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Now you're going to have you're going to have to click leave because otherwise I think I tend to click everybody off. Okay. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> bye bye. Oh my goodness, so fascinating. And as I say, there was another Instagram live and Facebook live that I did with um, Tim Samuels, who's one of the co-founders with Dr. Uma. This is um, I've actually got the little leaflet in front of me here. This is all the things. Go and check them out. Love all the branding. Really, really good. Evidence-based, coming from Harvard and Stanford University medics, practicing nutritional psychiatry. Fascinating stuff. 
Right, uh, before I go, oh, interesting comment here from Joby on Instagram, who says that she's recently heard that kiwi fruit can help repair DNA. And she mentions a Dr. William Lee, who I think is also at Harvard. William Lee, I sat next to him at a dinner in Paris a few years ago, and we buddied up because he was just working on his book. I think it's called Eat Your Eat F Eat Foods Against Cancer, something like that. Can't remember the exact name, um, but completely fascinating. And in fact, you've reminded me I need to connect with William Lee and maybe get him on as a guest or as a podcaster because really fascinating. And again, he was way ahead of his time um, looking at the very specific ingredients in food. But of course, you know, with so many of these things, you do actually have to have quite a lot of it. So actually having a good supplement can help. Go and check it out. If you want to try it, Liz Loves in capitals, all one word, gets you 20% off. So big thanks to Tim and to Uma and to everybody at Karmacist. Now, talking about things that are off, as in money off, lots of you loved the microbes chat with Katie, wasn't she great? All the way from Somerset. This was in my, my bag. I put it on a, in a resealable plastic bag because I didn't want it to leak. This is the one that I am taking. It's the BioLive microbes, the BioLive gold. And I am even more determined after my conversation with Dr. Uma to look after my gut and to feed all those beneficial bacteria so they can feed my brain and interact with everything else in a positive, healthy way. And we do also have the Liz Loves on everything on the microbe site. And it's a really interesting site. They've got microbes for pets. You can feed your cat and your dog and your chickens and you can feed your plants. You can feed your veggie patch, all sorts. So 10% off everything at Microbes, and that's Microbes with a Z at the end, Microbes. Um, the other thing that I have been traveling with, which I just popped into my bag, which reminded me, lavender oil. Who else is a big fan of lavender oil? Oh my goodness, something so simple, so inexpensive, and so very calming. You know what Dr. Inn was talking about, that grounding. Oh, just that headspace, that calm. I put a dot of this on my pillow every night and never without it got lots of bottles of it and this is the neil's yard one i love it it's in a little blue glass bottle lavender for relaxing it is such a great smell and we do still have our discount with them if you want to check out anything at neil's yard 15 percent off liz loves and i shall be restocking because i'm actually getting through it I need to make sure that i've got plenty um, to last me for my trip here. I absolutely love it. Just checking through the questions here. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Nikki. Yeah, there are things that we can do. So much rubbish life throws at us, but this space is safe and calming and reassuring and positive, positive vibes. I do, I've been on Twitter a bit recently and that is not a positive space, is it really? You've got to wear a you know helmet to go on to that but i do follow some interesting people on twitter and uh, but i do put my hashtag is like positivity please i try and only tweet like kind of positive stuff <laughs> that can help um oh facebook has lost sound have you lost sound i'm very sorry about that so let me try how about that is that any better facebook maybe it's the connectivity i hope that those of you who are still with me um, are perhaps listening now or watching on Instagram because we are on both platforms. Um, just before I go, we do have just a few of these left. This is a freebie. It's called Give Me Strength. Love that name. The Strengthening Scalp Concentrate. Lots of chat about thinning hair, particularly post-COVID, post-menopause. This is a great product. Um, and that is free. It's worth £25. And if you take out your direct debit subscription to Liz R. Wellbank magazine, you get it free. Um, there's only a few left, so be quick if you would like that, or if you want to give the magazine, perhaps you're thinking ahead to Mother's Day, great gift. We're working on our next issue, the March, April issue will be coming out soon for subscribers, uh, or Easter, perhaps a bit better for you than a chocolate egg. I'm gonna have chocolate eggs as well, definitely, but you know, a little bit in moderation. Um, but we just have a few of those left, okay, if you want, be quick. Um, before I go, let me just check through a very quick questions. Uh, this is from Nicola on Instagram, who says, are sad lamps worth buying? So I guess here in the sunshine in Kenya, 
I don't need a sad lamp because I'm surrounded by sunshine. But I think there's some really interesting data on uh, sad seasonal affective disorder. And yes, I think if you are somebody who suffers, then do have a look. I'm not an expert. Um, I think we have got an, an article maybe on sad online. Rachel, my lovely, if you're on Facebook, maybe you can pop a link up to that. Um, go on the Mizar Wellbeing website and look up SAD, S-A-D. Um, I'm sure we've got some links to some things that might help you there. Uh, Victoria says, which type of magnesium is best for sleep? I'm going to be doing quite a deep dive into magnesium because it is an, an amazing mineral and we've touched on it before. From my understanding, magnesium is all good. Uh, but there are some that are easier on the stomach than others. Magnesium citrate is the one that can cause diarrhea and upset tummies if you take too much of it. Um, if that's an issue for you, if you have an issue with being a bit blocked, then it could be a good thing because it could help ease things along. But that's the one that perhaps can cause a bit more of the stomach upset. Uh, magnesium glycinate, I think it's called, is the one that tends to be a bit gentler. Um, again, we've got an article on magnesium on lizardwellbeing.com, so do go and take a look at that. Um, this is, oh, I've got some menopause chat here going on uh, from Charlotte on YouTube. Hi, Charlotte. You say, um, it's so fantastic the information you give us, so inspiring. My friend in Australia has been trying every avenue to get HRT as she's suffering with bladder problems and sleepless nights because she's now over 60 they keep telling her she can't have it as it's too late. Well, I don't know what your guidelines are in Australia, but certainly here in the UK, if you look at the latest NICE guidelines, it very clearly says that it's never too late. Um, you may have a little bit more of an issue and you may need to chat to your doctors and maybe go through two or three different GPs, maybe to get you know a, a doctor who's educated and informed about later prescribing for HRT couple of things that I would suggest. Um, one is downloading the Balance app. It's a free app and it's a symptom tracker that you can take to your doctor. I would also suggest following um, the menopause doctor. Obviously, Dr. Louise Newson is very good. The menopause charity is an extremely good resource. Um, and these are all free websites, evidence-based websites. So do please take a look. I've also got a download on lizardwellbeing.com and that's the truth about HRT. And that gives quite a lot of guidance in there. It is written for the UK, but there is quite a lot of international information there as well. So I just hope that it can help because certainly, you know, things like recurring bladder infections, UTIs, using vaginal estrogen, topical estrogen can be unbelievably effective and safe. And there's lots, there's lots online uh, about that. So do please check out some of the resources that I have looked at. Lastly, uh, Rara Rocks on Instagram says, I love a good mixed healthy salad, but probably ruin it by slathering it in a shop bought Caesar dressing. Any good alternatives? OK, so what I do is I use a good quality extra virgin olive oil. I mix in a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a little bit of Dijon mustard, put it in a jam jar, give it a good old shake to emulsify it, a little bit of salt and pepper. You can add a bit of turmeric as well if you wanted to for good measure. And then because I love a Caesar salad dressing to Roro Rocks, and what I do is I add a bit of anchovy paste. So you can buy squashed anchovies in a tube, or you could just get, you know, like tinned anchovies and jarred anchovies and just chop them up and pop them in your salad dressing. But for me, that gives it a little bit of the Caesar salad -y, uh, flavor. So I hope that is helpful. But yes, if you look at most shop bought dressings, I mean, they're full of sugar, they're full of emulsifiers and, you know, added stuff that we don't need. All the things that Dr. Uma was warding us off um, against. OK, one last question here. Carol says, does kombucha spike blood sugar? Well, it shouldn't do. Again, we're all different. So our blood sugars can be spiked by different things. But what happens is the SCOBY, the beneficial bacteria, SCOBY, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeasts, digests the sugar to turn it into good gut bugs so it's actually in itself kombucha when it's fermented is low sugar so it shouldn't spike your blood sugars anyway i popped a little video on youtube not that long ago about some of the things that i do to have low sugar drinks um because i've noticed out here in kenya they put even more sugar in the sodas it's really wicked you know you look at the amount of sugar and the cola drinks and the tonics and the you know the orange fizzy squashes which i won't name 
um, actually have more sugar than the UK. It's, it's really not good. So um, yeah, I, I did a little piece about that and about finding lower sugar alternatives. Right, that is it today. Uh, do ping more questions if you'd like to in the comments and we'll pick that up and we will try and cover as much as we can on Thursday. I'm going to be back on Thursday with another really interesting nutritional therapist. 